Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy. Uh, this is my weekly video blog series, as you, as you may know, and um, or you may not know. And uh, I post a brand, a brand new, brand, brand new, brand new. It's just like one word sometimes. I, I post a new tip here each and every Friday. Just little stuff to think about um, when you're playing the guitar. And uh, that's that's what guitar tips is. And uh, this week is no different. Sometimes I just riff. Uh, I get some idea of something I want to talk about. Other weeks, I'm responding to a question from a regular viewer. And uh, this week, I thought I would reply to uh, a question that I've been asked um, a few times, uh, you know, recently, um, uh, which has to do with memorizing tunes. Uh, that's something that if you're going to play professionally, you need to be able to do. Um, so I wanted to talk about memorizing tunes. So this week's guitar tip is memorizing tunes. Guitar tips. Number, I don't know what number it is. <laughs> but whatever number it is, you'll see it across the bottom there. Might be 119, might be 120. Anyway, um, memorizing tunes. So let's break this down a little bit. Uh, memorizing tunes, at least in my world of professional guitar playing, uh, tends to fall into one of two categories. Memorizing jazz tunes or... Um, and I'll use that term loosely. I don't necessarily mean tunes that are in the jazz idiom, but when I say memorizing jazz tunes, I just mean memorizing tunes that people tend to interpret interpret differently every time they're played. Versus, that's one type of tune that you might have to memorize. Versus another type of tune, which I'll call pop, uh, which people tend to play the same way every time it's played. So that might be a Beatles song where when people play it, they usually play it in the original key. They usually follow the original recorded arrangement. Whereas, you know, a jazz tune like, um, oh, uh, I Love Paris, say, which is a song by Cole Porter, um, you could go searching for, and you might find 20 or 30 completely different versions of that tune. So for me anyway, it's a, it's a slightly different process for how to memorize, you know, a, a pop tune where the guitar part is very specific versus memorizing a jazz type of tune, which might just be, you know, 32 bars of music that get played in, in a, in a repeating loop and there's no set guitar part. There might not even be a guitar on the recording that you happen to have of, of that tune. So um, those are slightly different challenges for your, for your memory and for your hands and for your connect connectedness to your instrument. Um, but what they both have in common, uh, and again, I, I can only explain how I memorize tunes. I, I don't claim to know you know, the ultimate universal secret for memorizing tunes. But I'll tell you what works for me. Um, there's a couple things. One is uh, I, I focus on things that are in the foreground. So if it's a tune with words, I will focus on the words and try and memorize the words. Um, and I might uh, memorize the melody and I might memorize the bass motion, not necessarily the bass line, not necessarily what the bass player on whatever recording, not 
necessarily the specific part, though sometimes if it's really intrinsic, um, if it's really a, a key part of the song, but just the root motion, uh, you know, are we going from one to six to four to five, or from just one to five, or whatever it is. Because if I pick up my guitar, um, but you, by the way, you might be wondering where the heck my guitar is. Usually in guitar tips, I have a guitar in hand. Uh, my guitar is just out of frame here, but it's quite late at night, and uh, I'm in a hotel room in Brooklyn. I've been here recording all week. It's Thursday night. I wanted to uh, get this uh, recorded so that I can post it on Friday. Anyway, it's a little bit late to be strumming my guitar in a hotel room. Uh, anyway, uh, where, where was I? So I tend to focus on those things if, if it's... Um, you know, whether it's a jazz tune or a pop tune, I don't, what I'm not trying to do is memorize the chords as names of things. Like it goes, you know, A minor, F, C, D. Like that's for me hard to memorize. But if I can hear the root motion that goes, you know, the sound of, I don't have perfect pitch, but I think A is something like, um, um, dum, bum, that's F, bum, that's C, bum, that's D. Uh, I, I'm not thinking of a particular song, I'm just making up uh, some something in my head here. But the point is, you, you really want to be able to hear the bass, the, the root motion, and the melody, and the words, and, and not not think too much about just memorizing, you know, the names of the chords. I don't find that to be very helpful. I need to hear everything, basically everything has to be a melody. So the melody of the song is a melody and the bass line is a melody. Melodies I can remember. N chord names and sounds of chords aren't, aren't as memorable to me. I think they live in a different part of my memory space from where melodies live. Um, so one thing I'm, I, I'm, I know I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but um, it's important. <laughs> so melodies, 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 focus on the melodic elements. That way, uh, when you pick up your guitar, if you really know the bass line and the, the vocal melody or the instrumental melody, and you have a good connection with your instrument, even if you've never played the song before, you can play the melodies. Like here, here's an exercise. Um, when I'm done explaining this, I hope you'll press pause and actually do this. Uh, pick up your guitar and just play a melody that you know super well. It could be your favorite song of all time. It could be an old Christmas song. It could be a Beatles song. It could be a brand new song, whatever. Um, I'm a bit nostalgic, so the songs that I know best tend to be old songs, Beatles songs, Christmas songs. And play a melody in one key, and then try play it in another key, play it in a different octave. If you can take a melody of a song that you like and migrate it all over the guitar, then you should have no problem playing it and memorizing it. The chords are, I think, pretty easy if you can then also hear the, the bass motion, the root motion, how the chords move. And, and those two things together, the melody and the bass line, basically makes up the song. Um, if it's a song you're just beginning to learn, I would listen to it as much as possible. If it's a jazz song where there's lots of different versions, make yourself a mixtape. It could be, you know, a Spotify playlist or you know something in iTunes or burn a CD if, if that's what you're into. And put a whole bunch of different versions on, on a CD or a playlist or whatever. And listen and, and, and try and get to know the song as raw material. This, this is in the jazz realm. As you try to get to know it as raw material more than specific uh, things to memorize. Now, if it's a pop thing where you've got to memorize the specific guitar part, then there's probably just one well-known recording that you need to learn, and I would listen to it over and over and over and over. Put it on repeat, listen to it when you're in the shower, listen to it when you're driving, listen to it when you're sleeping. Just listen, listen, listen. It has to move from the place of where you store new things that you're hearing for the first time. It has to go and live in the same space as your favorite song of all time. If you can't get it to migrate from new song file to 
uh, favorite song file, you're not going to be able to memorize it. Um, so repetition is really helpful. Um, also, I find transcribing things to be a very helpful way to memorize them. Uh, so I'll listen to something, I'll write out all the things that I need to know. It could be just writing out the melody, writing out the bass line, writing out the chord, whatever is helpful for you. Write it down and then ball it up and throw it away or at least hide it. Um, because if you get stuck looking at the paper, you're never, ever, ever going to get off the paper. So the exercise I find helpful is to transcribe it and look at the paper for a few minutes when you're done. Make sure you got all the pieces right. Transcribing is helpful because you get into some nitty gritty stuff that you might miss if you're just listening casually. So it, it, it brings your focus really far into details. And then as soon as you've made a decent little you know chart, it could be sketchy just as long as you know what it says, um, put it away, hide it. Um, you know, one thing about memorizing tunes is that if you don't have to, you won't. That's what I've found anyway. So if I make charts and I keep looking at them, I will never memorize the tunes. Uh, as soon as I hide the charts, uh, a, diff a different kind of memory kicks in. Um, if you've got a solo gig, like a little, you know, cafe gig where you're playing a bunch of tunes, don't bring your songbook. Show up empty handed and see how much music you can make uh, without charts. So I feel like memorizing people make it to be a thing of what's the trick to memorizing things. And I, I, I would like kind of flip that around and try to tap into how many songs do you already know by memory? How many, so how many songs could you play if you had to play a solo gig right now? Um, and so take stock of that. Take stock of the things you already know. Um, and beyond that, if you have to learn some new music, as you might have to learn music for a gig playing in somebody else's band, that's tomorrow or next week or next month, Listen, 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 listen. Have it on 24 hours a day. I don't know if this is scientifically sound, but it works for me. I need to get it to migrate from new song space to old, familiar. I can sing it in my sleep. I can sing the bass line. I can sing the drum part. I can sing the vocal. I can sing the melody. You have to know everything as a real melodic or musical thing um, and if you're just trying to do it I don't know there, there's one there's one other piece of memorization that I'll mention that I find uh, to be helpful which is visual memorization I've, I'm thinking of this because I've been in the studio all week uh, reading a bunch of charts and after the second or third take if, if we keep doing the song again I don't want to be looking at the charts anymore um, I play differently when my eyes are fixated on chord names on a chart and looking for where the DS is and, excuse me, where the coda is and how many, you know, repeats and whatever. So, um, it's good to be able to look at a chart and look away. So a good thing to practice is look at a chart and see if you can just glance at the first four bars and then close your eyes and play it. And as you get to about the third bar or halfway through the third bar, open your eyes and grab the next four bars and then close your eyes or look away or whatever, but don't look at the page. This is a different kind of memorization. It doesn't have to do with melody and things that you're hearing and, and memorizing, but it does have to do with not being glued to the page, Just being able to glance and then look away and, and play what's, what, what's there. Uh, it could be a melody, it could be chord symbols, it could be, you know, guys who are really great at it, guys and gals who are great at this, can look at eight bars at a time, 16 bars, maybe a whole page of music, and just grasp it, and, and then they're able to look away and make the music. Um, you can't do that overnight, it takes practice. So practice doing that, practice reading but not reading. Um, you really want to, as much as you can, be listening. Music is a listening art. We write it down because we have to. Um, but, yeah, but don't play music with your eyes. Play music with your ears and your, your inner ears. Uh, at least that's what works for me. So I hope this has been helpful. It's a little bit um, uh, rambling as 
I can be a lot, <laughs> but um, I'm fried. I've been in the studio three long days and uh, I've got to wake up super early and fly back home and get back to my teaching job at LA College of Music. Um, so uh, if it's a little less than focused, please forgive me. I don't mean to waste your time. I know your time is valuable. I'm sure you've got a lot of other things to be doing. So I'll stop here and just say thank you. Uh, thank you to the Martin String Company for uh, being a su uh, supporter and sponsor of Guitar Tips. Uh, thanks to you for tuning in and subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can do that in the space down below. Um, until next week, I am Adam Levy. For guitar tips, stay tuned and take good care.